Hey there, welcome to another Curtis Stage video tutorial. Today's tutorial is an Illustrator, and this is our demo number one in Illustrator. We're gonna use the pen tool and learn how to, basic usage of that. So we're gonna learn how to manipulate our paths and anchor points. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is open up Illustrator, clearly, and then you're gonna to want to click Create New or go to File, New, either one. So I'm gonna click Create New, and you'll notice that there's some pre-made template sizes right up at the top up here. We're not going to use any of those today, but just know that they're there. We're going to go over to our right-hand side and make a custom size in inches. So we're going to go to inches. We're going to go over here and make it five by five inches square. We're just going to pick a square document. And then what we're going to do is we're going to increase our artboards. I'll explain this in a minute. We're going to increase our artboards to two. So we're going to have a five by five inch document artboards two, we're gonna have zero inches on our bleeds, and that's it, we're ready to go once we do that. Then we're gonna click create. And when we have that, you're gonna see two artboards side by side right here. You also see uh, possibly a panel with your artboards. Uh, I'm gonna close that for now, don't need that open. So I've got my, my two artboards here, they're small right now, I can zoom into them, command plus, just like in Photoshop. And just like in Photoshop, I can use a space bar to move around. So you can zoom in, zoom out, command plus, command minus. That'll get me in and out. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna use this first artboard with the pen tool and create some uh, geometric designs in here. Then we're gonna do some curved designs on this side. So I wanna turn on the grids. So to do that, I wanna go to view and I wanna go to show grid. Now, you can see that the grid is set up in such a way that um, I have five boxes going across and five down. Essentially, let me show you how to make this grid. And we're gonna change the color of it too. So I'm gonna go up to Illustrator, Preferences, Guides and Grid. And when I get here, you'll see that the guides are up here. I'm not talking about guides here. I really wanna concentrate on the grids down here. So I can change the color of the grid. So I can pick any color in here, change that. I could change my style of my grid, it could be dots or lines. And then I could have subdivisions within the grid. So you can see that um, I want a grid line every one inch. This is a five inch document. So a grid line every one inch would give me five boxes. And then I have eight subdivisions. Watch what happens if I put one subdivision in here. Click OK. Then I'm just gonna have something that looks like that, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, a couple, you know, just basic shapes in here so we kind of understand how to use the pen tool. So the pen tool is the way that we, you know, kind of basic drawing, vector drawing a tool within Illustrator. It's kind of tricky to use at first, but we're gonna to try to make it easy. So right over here, you'll see it, it looks like a calligraphy pen. And if you hold this open, you'll see that there's four tools within inside the pen tool. You'll also see that there's a little bar right over here to the side. If you click that, it'll detach the pen tool from the toolbar. It doesn't get rid of it, it just detaches it. And then you've got access to all of these tools as well. I really like this feature in Illustrator. Not quite sure why they don't have it in Photoshop. All right, what the pen tool does is it makes two things. It makes anchor points and it makes path lines. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to connect anchor points and a line will be created because of those anchor points. So what I want to have available to me is I want to be able to see my options bar across the top here so that I can kind of see what's happening with this. I want to make sure that I can kind of adjust this pen tool size and if it's got a fill in it and whatnot. So if you don't see a bar that goes across with our options in it. So if I go to window and I go to, you can see application frame, toolbars, control. If I click that, you're gonna see this control, which is an options bar for each tool that you're clicked on. So it's right there. Now you may have already seen that there. Mine was turned off. I just wanted to show you how to turn it on. Uh, so again, window, right? And it'll have all of our panels in window. This is just like Photoshop. In Photoshop, the options bar, or what they call control here, is down at the bottom, but in Illustrator, it's up here, along with application frame and the toolbars. Okay, so that's that. That's our options bar, or control. 
Okay, so now you can see that I have a couple, you know, options here. So I have a fill, so I can have a fill color. So I'm going to change that color to, let's say, a gray. And I'm going to keep the stroke or the outline at black. So you just press this little button and that opens it up. You press this little button and that opens it up. So you can see I've got black as my stroke. And then I'm going to increase the stroke line to, let's say, I don't know, uh, three points. That's fine for right now. I'm not going to touch any of this other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some shapes. So the first shape I'm going to create is going to be, uh, I'm going to make like the top of a castle, right? So we're going to do that. So I'm going to um, use these grid lines to help me draw this geometry here. So what I want to do is I'm just going to start at the edge over here. Don't worry about that. It's kind of at the edge of the artboard. I'm going to make a click on the second box down, go up one then over one, down one, and you can see your guides will, you have some smart guides that are kind of helping you, and the grid, you can, it'll snap to that grid, or it should. Now it's gonna look weird until we go all the way around, but you can see I'm kind of alternating, right? And then I go down, and then up, and then over, and I'm gonna go here. Now that's pretty good, but I'm gonna go down one here, click on that, Go all the way across. And each time I'm clicking, I'm making what's called an anchor point. So every one of those little white squares there is an anchor point. You see that one's blue because I was clicked on it, but every one of these is an anchor point. And every line that's a stroke line of black that I make is a path line, right, or a segment. So this is an anchor point and a segment. All of this together makes a path. And we can see that in layers. So if I go over to layers, and I open, toggle this open, you can see that I've got a path right there. So there's the top of my castle. I'm gonna click my uh, selection tools, black arrow tool, move this up just for a second, move it up. And I wanna make the bottom of this. So I'm gonna make a separate path for this. So I'm gonna click back on my pen tool and I'm gonna make the, uh, the castle start right here. So I'm gonna it seems like I'm adding to this path, but I'm not. I'm creating a separate path because I moved this up and then clicked off of it. You see how when I'm clicked on, it's selected. When I click off, it's not selected. Then if I go here to the pen tool, I'm drawing a new path now because I'm not adding to this one because it's not selected. So now what I'm gonna do is click here, make my first point, then go over three, click there, then I'm gonna go down to this corner right there. I'm gonna go across all the way and just kinda, of, and then I'm gonna complete this path. You can see if I stopped right here, I wouldn't have a completed path. So I'm gonna complete this path and you'll notice the little circle that comes up on the pen tool when I've completed a path. So I'm gonna click there and I've got a path completed. Now, these are two separate objects. You'll see over in the layers, panel that there's two separate paths or two separate objects and I could go in here and modify them to show you that so if I go and click the fill and make that red you can see that that path right there the top of the castle is red and now I can click this one and make that one red if I want as well or whatever color okay now I can select both of these. They're both inside layer one. It works a little differently than Photoshop where it automatically, everything is in one layer that you draw unless you create more layers at the bottom of the layer stack. The paths, you could have 150 paths in here. They could all be on layer one. That's not how Photoshop works. So Illustrator works a little bit differently. So when I'm creating different objects, let's say I was creating a second object, I'd probably create a new layer and then all the paths for that second object would be in that new layer. All right, now I can select both of these items over here in multiple ways. I can go over to my layers panel and I can click this little round circle right there on layer one and it selected the whole thing and then I can modify this. I don't need to click command T or anything. Notice I just grabbed a corner. It's already got the transform on it and I can grab any corner and it's a free transform here. So now this castle is kind of looking like a fork. I can also select individual paths by clicking these little circles right here. So I can click individual, right? And then Command Z undo. Click select individual, right? Command Z undo. And I can also use my black arrow tool to select individual. I can also drag select with my black arrow tool, my selection tool, 
drag select over this. So I click on the screen, hold my mouse down, drag over the cross, both the objects, and see how they're both selected? And it shows that they're both selected right there in the layer stack. And then I can move this around almost like they were grouped. I can also group these together. That's for a different tutorial. All right, so I know I can transform these, right? I can rotate it, so I've got a fork here. What if I want to copy and make another one of these? This is like Photoshop. If I am on the, uh, the selection tool, the black arrow tool, which is kind of like the move tool in Photoshop, but it also selects, then I can hold down Option. This is just like Photoshop. Hover my mouse over the object and drag and let go, and I've got another object. Option, click and drag, and you've got another object, right? So I've hold down option, click and drag, you got another object. Of course, I can delete them by hitting delete. If I, I can select individual parts and do that. Okay, so that's using the um, pen tool in a real basic way. Um, what if I want to manipulate this fork? Now I've got a fork. What if I want to manipulate this a little bit more? Let me zoom into it. And you'll see there's individual anchor points here. When I click on this, if I, I've got this, these little things that look like anchor points, but those are just on my transform. But there's going to be individual anchor points in, on, these, on this path. And to get to those, to be able to edit those, I want to click my gray arrow tool or my direct select tool. And now I can see these individual anchor points. You see I'm clicked on that one, but the corner of the fork, and I can move this. Oh, look at that. I can move that around. I can also, there's a little circle right there, and I can pull this in and curve that. So if I click this, I can, right? And I'm just doing that, and it didn't affect the other ones up there. Uh, I can push it back and straighten that back out again. I can go to this corner, push that back, straighten it out. But you can see these little individual anchor points after the end, because this is a vector graphic, I can go manipulate all these anchor points after the fact and really create some dynamic shapes here, right? This is great for logo design, great for if I'm um, making texts. It's also just great to create graphic images using uh, a vector tool like Illustrator because I can manipulate this really easily afterwards, right? Let's say I want this thing to match up here. I can kind of do that, right? And I've got that going on. So that's the direct select tool. This allows me again to edit individual anchor points. I can edit more than one anchor point at a time. Let's say I wanted to edit this anchor point and that anchor point. Well, I can hold shift on my keyboard, select both those, see how they're blue and they're both selected. And then I can, when I pull one of them, both of them will go, see that? So let me do that again. If I go right here, select that anchor point, hold shift, click that anchor point, I'm on my direct select tool, this gray one, and now I can grab, right, grab this as one, but if I select, hold shift, and then grab one of the two, doesn't matter which one, there I go. I can do both of them at once. You could do five of them at once if you want. It can get a little crazy, so you gotta be careful with that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna command minus and zoom out a little bit. We're gonna go to this, other artboard here, second artboard, so we can make some curve paths. I'm going to turn off my grid now. I'm going to hide the grid, turn that off, and now I'm going to make some curved lines with the pen tool. So I'm going to go to my pen tool, still have this on. We're going to get to this in a second. Still got that. There's my pen tool. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to click on the left side of my screen, make an anchor point. Then I'm going to go up here click like I'm making a straight, right? I'm like I'm making a triangle, but I'm gonna click and drag to the right and notice it's going to give me a curve line. And then I'm gonna go down here. Now I'm not dragging, I'm not clicking anything. Automatically, Illustrator thinks I wanna make another, if I've made one curve, the next anchor point will also be curved. The next segment will be curved. So it thinks I wanna make another curve. This one I didn't click and drag, so my next one's gonna be straight. And that one's straight, that one's straight, and that one's straight, and that one's straight. If I click and drag, that's curved, and so is my next one. Does that make sense? Pretty cool. And then I can close this. I don't know what that shape is. Delete. So delete, delete. All right, let me do this again. So if I click, make an anchor point, click up here, drag to the right or to the left, you'll see these handles that are coming out. Those handles allow you to edit the curve even after the fact. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna kind of do this, then I'm gonna go across, cause that was a straight now. And 
I can go here with my direct select tool and you see that handle? I can go and edit that after. That's pretty cool. Let me move this out of the way. I can edit this afterwards. I can also shrink it, expand it, so you can do all kinds of things. You wanna have fun with this. All right, I can add, right, these other ones, I can add anchor points to this. And so then when I go to my direct select tool, then I've got other anchor points to edit now. This tool right here subtracts anchor points, clearly. This tool converts an anchor point. So if this was a straight, it will now convert to a curve or vice versa. So if I click that, see how it just went? It was a curve, now it's straight. That's a curve, straight, right? This is a curve, so I click and drag, or a straight, and I click and drag, and now it's a curve. That's a straight and a curve, so if I click it, right, click and drag, then I've got both of them curved. So you can really kind of have fun with these and just mess around. This is how you're gonna to get to know how to use this quite a bit, but you know, uh, making curved lines in Illustrator is a little bit tricky at first. So let's do it one more time. I'm gonna to go to my pen tool. I'm gonna to make my first anchor point, I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just making an anchor point anywhere. Then my second anchor point, click, drag, right or left, up, down, wherever direction you wanna go. And then my third anchor point, now let's say I don't want a curve right here, let's say I want a straight. Well, I wanna get rid of this curve and that handle is the indicator that I have a curve on this side. You can just go back to this anchor point. Notice when I kind of rewind my mouse back and click on it, now it got rid of that handle on that side and now I have a straight. So that's one way you can go from a curve line and not have a, another curve line right after you made a curve line. All right, so that's our demo number one in Illustrator using the pen tool, just a basic pen tool tutorial. Uh, we'll see you next time.